you have what I call the pleasure principle. That innately, everything, every addiction driven in our brains registers as a pleasure. Scientifically, psychologically, or otherwise, everything that we do as an addiction in our heads carries a certain sense of pleasure. Whether you're smoking, whether you're, it's sex, whether it's that, whether it's gambling, there's a certain satisfaction. So I call it the pleasure, the pleasure principle. And all addictions are the same. All, by the way, they have the same pattern. Different addictions, but all of them follow the same pattern. And they begin from stirring a pleasure in your head. And then the point where your will gives in to that pleasure. Because there's a, there's, there's a place where a man can have the star of the crave of that pleasure, but they're still in, in possession of their vessel. And then there's a point where the will what? Gives in. And then the consumption of that pleasure. And then there is that point when that pleasure wears off immediately. That's the most sober moment of any man. That's where many people make commitments. I'll never do it again. This is the last time I'm drinking. Eh? You know, this is the last time I'm smoking. This is the last time I'm gambling. There's the, when the moment it wears off, the pleasure wears off. Many of us go into unrealistic commitments of saying, ah, you know, until the next time the process, what? It starts again. And then it starts again. And then it, it's always like that. Number one. We must, and especially I'm talking to people who are, here, who are either born again, are not born again, sorry, you're not a believer in Christ, or you are a believer, but you are distant. I think every, every deliverance, every form of deliverance, even before prayer, begins with deliberately building our relationship with God. There are people here, some things had you. You didn't have them, they had you. And when you got born again, they left. Some of you, they were there in salvation. But when you became serious, they left. Now I want to help that person who is not even yet born again. That without God, you can do nothing. It's only going to be a spiral that's going to draw. It might take 20 years or 15, but it will come back. It's just a matter of time. But now let's go to the converted because we see the travel, the trouble even in the converted. And this is what I learned for a fact. Soon I'll teach about it. I need like an hour and a half. But I have seen that when we become born again, we are introduced to another kind of pleasure. Somebody can say, you guys, what are you doing in the sun? If somebody was driving by, there's a person in the world. Eh? There are people right now who might be watching us and they are thinking, but a person who has things to do, you sit in the sun on a Saturday. Are you following what I'm saying? Because they don't know that like, even me for a born again who would ask, how can you drink alcohol in the morning? You, you wake up and the first thing that comes to you, like I am amazed at how somebody wakes up and the first thing they think about is a spin. They are also shocked and say, but how can you be on a Saturday and you're just in the sun the whole day? Why? Because when you become born again, certain, you're introduced to a certain pleasure. We, sometimes I want to tell people, when we call him the most high, eh? <laughs> there's a time where the word of God starts to work in you. And you see, because I'll give you an, somebody shouting. In the bar, you find people screaming. Now, there's a person here screaming. He's not drinking. But there's something going in their system. They also don't know what they're doing. But they're what? In the upper room experience, when men spoke in tongues, the people outside said, these men are drunk. Praise the Lord. Because whether you want it or not, when you continue plugging in, you're also going to, when the Bible says that, thy right hand, their pleasures forevermore. God has a way of introducing you to a higher pleasure. Somebody shout hallelujah. A man is not free when he still fights with his will. A man is free when this thing 
finally gives up on his will <laughs> that you sit down and the man is drinking and there is no craving sigamba kana otula wanoka kuita nayo chalwana if you're that kind of person you're still in the process of freedom there are people who can sit next to the person drinking and this nothing nothing that's a man who is what who is totally free but the challenge we have had also and i'm going to mention these men we 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 we, we helped men shift from the pleasure of the world and when they came in god and started finding pleasures in god these pleasures came with as compensation and when they came as compensation for the sorrow they carried for losing their past pleasures they only dealt with god from a pleasure perspective without the responsibility that calls us higher than the pleasure So some either exercise themselves in the pleasures they can access as fast they deep they can go in God and then they one time because God can judge and see that their maturity has not yet matched up to the deeper pleasures and so can only give this far for them until they pay the price of maturation they hit rock bottom and they feel like that's the end of that pleasure now because they get to the end of that pleasure now they think how do i go on and some go back to the old pleasure now this is honestly why people fall back yes they went back to the old life they were in why because we did not deal with a very integral aspect here in the translations from the old fallen pleasure as of when we were introducing them into the pleasures of god and that is the word called death When the Bible says die to the world and the things of the world before these pleasures in God are actually defined it's expedient that a man goes through a process of death because no true conversion stands when a man has not gone through a certain death said so that even if the pleasures here a field and my maturity is wanting to take me to the deeper spaces in god because god is bottomless anyway if i should try to come back i should find myself dead yes when the verse says recon yourselves dead and alive unto god it's an awakening of a consciousness that doesn't happen every day that is reawakened every day paul calls it in dying's often maybe you're dealing with that pleasure that 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 addiction even while you're born again because you never really died have you thought about it that maybe you never went through the death process experience you you understand the death with which we die according to the trans- transition of the old man into the new man but you have never had that experience of your spirit and that's i think one of the deepest consecrations it's like i'll give an example if have you ever, has anybody ever been slain in the power of god just put up your hand have you noticed if you ever been slain for hours or minutes you can't last you can't think lustfully about a woman in the middle of a slain you can't tempt a dead man so i think i think even in this issue of 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 of, of addictions even while we are going through the process of of affirming positively which is a very important aspect telling yourself you don't have to but yet in working out that salvation it is god working that's what he say in you both to will and to do according to his good pleasure understand the mystery of death die to the flesh because th- this is the one aspect we, we we have not really taken in account and consideration dying to the flesh deaden in the parts of you your parts Paul says which are on the earth hmm? as though we are not on the earth no he's talking about those things which are connected to the world if there's a prayer anybody dealing with addiction should pray on this ground or as tell god if it's, a, it's if it's alcohol tell him kill me to alcohol not i want to stop tell him kill me to eat it says that when alcohol meets me i'm dead and when i meet it it is what 
Chris Depp.